I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Samip Singhania, the co founder of QuickSwap. Samip, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here today. Thanks, Ashton. Thanks for hosting me today. And yeah, I mean, like, I would love to, you know, be interviewed by you. And I'm like really thankful to Event Chain and you guys for hosting us today. Thanks a lot. Thank you for being here. And yeah, I'm really excited to dive into QuickSwap and the decentralized exchange with layer two solutions that you have. I would love for you to start us off for the people that aren't familiar with QuickSwap with just a high level overview and the focus uh, of the protocol. Yeah, of course. Why not? So QuickSwap is a decentralized exchange, right? It's an automated market maker and it's built on top of Polygon blockchain. I would say it's a layer two, right? So yeah, on top of Ethereum blockchain. So it's an automated market maker. So it's a clone, uh, yeah, so from the smart contract perspective, it's a clone of Uniswap V2, which is a very famous or the biggest AMM in the industry so far, right? So our aim for, by developing QuickSwap was to allow users, to allow traders to do a swap even worth $5, you know? So mm -hmm. that's why, because on Polygon chain, it, doing a transaction is very cheap. Uh, for a dollar, you can do, you know, thousands of transactions. So that's why, like, we adopted that particular technology and built QuickSwap on top of Polygon blockchain. Yeah, so that's, you know, a basic overview of what QuickSwap is all about. Definitely. And thank you, Samip, for that. And yeah, you mentioned from a smart contract perspective, very similar to Uniswap and SushiSwap, uh, except integrating Polygon as a layer two solution. Can you talk about the main advantages and the reason behind why you implemented Polygon and how that creates a competitive advantage for QuickSwap and, and makes it, you know, more ideal for trading uh, than those other decentralized exchanges? Yeah, of course. So I think, you know, I should give you a brief summary about the history of QuickSwap, like how it came into existence and that should answer your question, right? Definitely. It's okay. So, yeah. So if I remember correctly, last year, yeah, in March 2020, the Ethereum prices was somewhere around 90 US dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the gas prices mm -hmm. were very cheap, somewhere around 2 way, 3 way, 4 way. That was the standard at that time. In March 2020, I'm talking about for so more than a year from now. But since March, you know, since this COVID-19 pandemic came in, we saw a recent surge uh, in people coming towards cryptocurrency. And that basically led into increasing prices of all the cryptocurrencies, whether it be BTC, Ethereum, like or any other cryptocurrency out there. And with the increased use of these blockchain networks, we saw a sudden surge in gas prices as well. And suddenly in somewhere in July or August, we realized that the gas prices are insanely high. And it doesn't make sense for the small traders or the small users to use the network anymore. So suppose if I want to do a swap of, I'm, I'm, I'm giving an example of Uniswap here because since we are, you know, a similar exchange, so I'll like take an example of Uniswap. So suppose, uh, let's say in July 2020, you wanted to do a swap of, let's say, 100 US dollar on Uniswap. And if you'll have to pay a gas price or a transaction price of 10 US dollar, it doesn't make sense to do that particular trade because mm -hmm. you are paying the 10% of the total transaction amount as a transaction fees. Like, and... And, and, you know, uh, then we started basically looking into this particular trend and we followed and when what we figured out that the gas price is increasing every day, right? So today, if it's 20, going, tomorrow it's 15, then it's 20, it's 25, 50, 100. So gas prices were insanely high, right? So that's what, that's when we thought, why not build something which a smaller user can actually use? Because Uniswap was only usable by big players at that time. Right. Even today, mm -hmm. it's usable by big players. Even today, you can't do a trade off, let's say, 10 US dollar on Uniswap. Does it make sense to do? Right. So then we decided, mm -hmm. let's build something which is actually usable by, by small users as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, we basically discussed this idea with uh, multiple people. Right. Sandeep was one of them. Sandeep is like one of the founders of Polygon Network. And then, you know, we onboarded LDA team as a marketing advisor to so Rob, LDA, Dave, Nicole, all like they are wonderful people. Right. And a very awesome marketer. So they joined us and then we started building QuickSwap on Polygon because at that time, even today, Polygon was like damn fast. So the block, block times on Polygon is two seconds, which means it will take your transaction to mine just two seconds. So in two seconds, your transaction will be confirmed. Right. And the gas mm -hmm. prices are insanely cheap. You can do thousands of transactions for just one dollar, just one US dollar. Right. Wow. So basically, you know, the purpose was to uh, was to build a quick swap on a platform where user can do trades without thinking twice about the transaction cost, right? And that's what we have achieved using quick swap, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the entire purpose of building quick swap. That's the history of quick swap, right? And yeah, I mean, like even yesterday, right? So even today, if you'll go to our info site and you will look at the last, you know, last hundred transactions, you will definitely find 
at least five or ten transactions which are worth just ten dollars, right? So that was our aim, and like we are actually moving towards this, and it's it feels really good when we see that people are actually you know using Kutswap to do very small trades, mm -hmm. and that was the purpose behind Kutswap. That's great, and thank you for that backstory, Samip. And yeah, it was noticeably. I noticed myself that the transaction fees for Ethereum, and especially on Uniswap, when you're doing decentralized swaps or adding liquidity, the cost seemed to be even more than sending just a transfer uh, regularly, sending Ether to another address. So uh, obviously with fees, you mentioned $10, but I actually saw some of the fees actually up to over $100 uh, per at, at the peak, uh, which was just not sustainable for small players. Um, so that's definitely right. a competitive advantage for Quick QuickSwap. I mean, you are your like right. So I, I like I said, ten dollars that was last year, right? Mm -hmm. But I, re if I remember it correctly, like a month from now, when like yeah, Ethereum prices were somewhere around forty four hundred US dollar, the gas price of doing one single transaction on Uniswap was three hundred US dollars, right? And here <laughs> the normal transaction, like, so that was like that's insanely high because at that time the gas prices were somewhere around fifteen hundred going, right? Mm -hmm. And the Ethereum prices were forty five hundred US dollar. So effectively, it was three hundred US dollar to do a one small trade on on Uniswap, which just went through one single pool, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, like insanely cheap, insanely expensive. Sorry, on Uniswap. Now, Samip, I we're talking about the competitive advantages, and I'm curious on the flip side, are there any downsides or challenges of creating a decentralized exchange like QuickSwap and utilizing a layer two solution rather than using Uniswap? You know, is there anything that actually makes it harder to use? Yeah, so there are certain downsides as well, right? So there, there are certain pros and then, like, of course, there are cons as well, right? And the biggest disadvantage that I personally see is uh, is a bridging mechanism, right? So right now, if uh, all the assets lie on layer one, right? Layer two is just the way to scale layer one. So Polygon is not a competitor of Ethereum and QuickSwap is not a competitor of Uniswap, right? So mm -hmm. we all, we both, like, we love Ethereum and we love Uniswap as well, right? The entire purpose of building Polygon was to scale Ethereum and the entire purpose of building Bootswap was to scale Uniswap, right? But mm -hmm. there are certain disadvantages. So the basic, again, the main layer or the core layer is still Ethereum. The, all the assets lies on Ethereum. So the one of the biggest UX problem, I wouldn't say a disadvantage, but a UX problem is when users have to, you know, bridge assets from Ethereum to Polygon. So suppose if you have USDC on Ethereum and if you want to use it on Bootswap or if you want to use it on any other application on layer two on Polygon, the first thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to transfer your assets from layer one to layer two. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest UX problems that we are trying to solve, how to make this process seamless, right? Mm -hmm. So apart from this, there are other problems as well. And uh, and the second most compelling problem being like, which we hear from our users on like everyday basis is wallets. So right now, like, you know, all the famous wallets or the big wallets out there, they support layer one or Ethereum, you know, by default, but they don't support uh, in layer tools like Polygon, right? Even on even mm -hmm. MetaMask doesn't support it. If you want to use a layer two solution like Polygon applications on MetaMask, you'll have to add custom RPC over there. Mm -hmm. So MetaMask has provided a, a very cool API using which application developers can basically provide their functionality within the application, but still it's a pain, right? I mean, like because they do not su support it by default. And same is true with Coinbase. So Coinbase doesn't support meta, uh, layer two solutions like Polygon, then Trust Wallet doesn't support, then like, no, I'm, I'm not sure if any, you know, big wallet support as of now. So that's mm -hmm. another like big pain that we'll have to face and we'll, we'll have to figure out how to fix this. So I think if somehow we are able to solve these two UX problems, like the biggest UX problem in the, not only in Kutsa, but the entire layer to application industry, it, I think it will be a big, big relief for the users. Definitely. And thank you for being transparent on that, that there are still some challenges and it is fa fairly early on. I know Polygon has right. got a lot of support recently, but it's still really early on in, in adoption for these layer two solutions, I think, in terms of what it will become in, in the coming years. Um, and now at the beginning of our talk, Samip, you mentioned uh, QuickSwap is a decentralized exchange, but also an automated market maker. And with that, uh, people can provide liquidity themselves to help uh, build liquidity on, on the protocol. And I'm curious uh, for liquidity providers that are looking at 
using QuickSwap. Is there any difference from providing liquidity on QuickSwap and on the other exchanges like Uniswap? And also, how are the APYs calculated uh, for the liquidity providers to, to earn interest while they're uh, putting their funds and locking them into the protocol? Yeah, that's a good question, basically. So to, uh, I think I'll answer this question in two parts. The first part is like how a liquidity provider provides liquidity on QuickSwap and whether it's similar to Uniswap or it's different. Right? And the second part of the question is like, you know, how the APYs are calculated and like what's the benefit of providing liquidity on QuickSwap? Right? Mm -hmm. So to answer the first question, right? So it's very similar to how you provide liquidity on Uniswap. It's actually the same, right? Because uh, like, as I said in the beginning, we are the clone of Uniswap. Right. And we are just much more faster and like cheaper than Uniswap. That's it. But we are, like inherently we are uh, we are the clone of Uniswap. So it works exactly the same way when you talk about swapping, when you talk about, you know, uh, liquidity provision or when you talk about like anything, you know, in this particular protocol. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to how you provide liquidity on Uniswap. You'll have to go and you'll have to suppose you'll have to choose a pair. Let's suppose you choose ETH USDC pair. So you'll have to provide liquidity to the both sides of the pair so in the ETH and in the USDC as well, like 50, 50, that's how it works. And it, mm -hmm. similarly, it works on QuickSwap as well. So yeah, very much similar. Now to answer the second uh, part of your question, how the APY is calculated and what's the benefit of providing liquidity on QuickSwap, right? So the QuickSwap, right? So yeah, so first of all, I'll talk about the tokenomics of QuickSwap and I think that should answer this question, mm -hmm. right? So QuickSwap has a native currency, which is called Quick Token, right? And the total sub uh, circulating supply of Quick Token is 1 million. Right. And out of that, but 1 million, 3.25%, uh, you know, stays with the team and like 96.75% of the remaining supply is basically for the community, right? So we have decided, you know, that we'll give somewhere around 95% to the, you know, uh, liquidity provision to the community governments, you know, whatever the community decides, 1% to the metric stakers, and then 0.75% we have like, you know, kept for just for the marketing purposes, right? Mm -hmm. So now. 95% is held just for liquidity provision, right? Just for liquidity mining. So what happens in QuickSwap, we have a liquidity mining program running on since the inception, since since October 2020, and it will last for four years, right? So right now there are 83 different pairs, you know, which are being rewarded with quick tokens on the QuickSwap platform. So if you provide a liquidity in any of those particular on in any of those pairs, and then what basically you can stake your LP tokens and, you know, earn quick rewards. So that, that's the first benefit of providing liquidity on QuickSwap. Right? You mm -hmm. provide liquidity, you get LP token, you stake those LP tokens and you earn quick rewards. Right? And now the second portion to it. The second portion to it is, is, it, is the trading fees. Right? So as you know, right now, the TDL of QuickSwap is $1.06 billion. Right? And the... Mm -hmm. Average daily volume on QuickSwap is somewhere around 250 to 300 million US dollars, right? Uh, which is still huge. Some like I still remember almost a week back, it was 850 million US dollar in a day, right? That's mm. the volume. So, yeah, so volume is huge, right? And on each trade on QuickSwap, there's a fee of 0.3%. So, suppose if I'm doing a trade of 1000 US dollar, I'll have to pay a 0.3% fee on top of it. Mm -hmm. So, out of this 0.3% fee, 0.25% fee go to the LP providers. Liquidity mm -hmm. providers. So that's the second benefit of providing liquidity on QuickSwap. You get 0.25% fee out of every trade which is made on QuickSwap, and the average trade volume of QuickSwap on like on every on each day is somewhere around 250 million US dollars. So that's a lot mm -hmm. of money in fee which is being generated on QuickSwap right now. Right. So that's the two you know benefits of providing liquidity. Now how the APYs are calculated. So APYs are basically calculated in two different sections. The first, the first section is if you are providing liquidity, if you are providing liquidity and you are staking your LP token, so you are earning quick rewards as well, right? So we cal we consider you know how much you are earning and then we compound it yearly. Mm -hmm. And similarly, we do for the fee as well, right? So if, uh, as for the total fee generated and your your portion in it, we do the compounding and we show the APY. So basically, APY is calculated considering two things, how much fee is being generated by the pool in which you have provided liquidity and what's your stake in that particular pool and like how much quick rewards are being given and what's your stake in that. So that's how basically the APYs are calculated as of now. Great. Thank you so much for elaborating as well on the quick token there. I was going to ask you about that and to hear that the liquidity providers uh, are, actually have access to almost all of the quick and, and you know, barely any is allocated elsewhere is really interesting to know. So thank you for all that background. 
And you know, we don't have a lot of time here, Samit, but I do want to ask you about uh, what's coming up next for QuickSwap. Uh, do you have more updates and, and, and milestones in the roadmap that are major releases that you're planning on releasing you know, throughout the summer of 2021 and, and throughout the rest of this year, really? Yeah, so that's a wonderful question. And like we get this question almost on a daily basis. So yeah, I would like to answer it here. Right. So like, as I said in the beginning, you know, the, the entire purpose of QuickSwap was to, you know, to smoothen the user's journey, how they use AMMs, how they use Texas, right? And the first portion of the, like the first point of was that to, you know, to reduce the transaction cost and to reduce the transaction time, which were very high on layer one. That's why like we chose layer two. So I think we have pretty much solved that particular problem. So that was the biggest UX problem, I would say, you know, the higher transaction mm -hmm. cost and the higher transaction time. So we have solved that particular, you know, the phase one of the UX problem. Now, like we are still focused on UX, right? Because like it's still, I, like I personally think and the entire team thinks that UX is not so good, not just of QuickSwap, but of entire AMM industry, I would say, mm -hmm. and especially on layer two. Like as we discussed in your previous question that, you know, there are a lot of bridging problems, then there are a lot of wallet problems, wallet not supporting quick Polygon network. So it's hard to use applications on Polygon on any wallet, especially QuickSwap, like, and maybe Aave Gochi and other applications as well. So our major focus right now is on improving the UX because that's mm -hmm. why we built QuickSwap in the first place. That was the entire purpose of building the QuickSwap, to improve the UX, right? So we are working on a lot of stuff right now to improve the UX and the major one being we are like uh, overhauling the entire design of our current interfaces, right? So we want to just not, we just do not want to, you know, redesign how QuickSwap works, but we want to redesign how uh, how AMM works, right? We want to change the user experience of how AMM works, right? Right now, it's very rudimentary, not just mm -hmm. QuickSwap, like even the good platforms out there. Um, if it, So suppose if you are coming from a traditional world, from a fiat world, and if I'll ask you to use QuickSwap, right? It will be very hard for you to use it. First, we'll have to get some tutorials, we'll have to understand what MetaMask is, like how to add a custom network over there, how to bridge your assets from Ethereum layer one to Polygon layer two, mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to use QuickSwap or any other application on layer two, right? So mm -hmm. that's the biggest friction, I would say. So our major focus right now is on improving UX, improving the design, improving the wallets, like and everything, like partnering up. So we are already partnering up with all these players who are out there to improve the UX, UX problem. Then apart, the next stage of this would be, so we are planning out, you know, a next version of QuickSwap. So I would say a, it, a V2, right? So mm -hmm. it's still under, so we are still considering what to do in that. We have pretty, some pretty good ideas. We are discussing it internally. We are discussing it with our advisors as well. And so I do not have much to disclose as of now, but I think, yeah, so quick, uh, quick five V2 is in our roadmap as well. But again, mm -hmm. like the first and foremost is the UX. Definitely. And I am excited to uh, see that launch of V2. I know Uniswap just came out with a V3. So uh, it will be really interesting to see. And I'm sure there are definitely a lot of UX improvements that will be needed to bring on more no coiners and, and even people that are only using centralized exchanges right now in cryptocurrency. They're sort mm -hmm. of afraid of the technical barriers to entry on even Uniswap, never mind moving into a layer, yeah. layer two solution. So uh, all the best continuing with that. If there are viewers that are looking to learn more about uh, the liquidity providing, trading on Uniswap, how to get start on, sorry, on QuickSwap, how to get started trading on QuickSwap and make their first trades, what's the best way for them to learn more and to get started? Yeah, so the so best way to learn is to go to our Medium page, I would say. And uh, there we have articles, we have tutorials, and you can like go through them and they start working on it. But apart from that, uh, there are certain YouTube videos which have been like created by our community members, by our team from LDA, by Nicole, by Dave, by Rock, like by everyone. And those are like wonderful tutorials, I would say. Not just in mm -hmm. like English language, but they are in regional languages as well. Mm -hmm. In Spanish, in French, like in different languages, people have created those tutorials. So I would say, why don't you go to YouTube, you search QuickSwap and you'll find a lot of tutorials over there. Or you go to our Medium page, you'll find a lot of articles over there. You know, and I'm definitely sure it will help you get started. But still, if you are stuck somewhere, go to Twitter, find me out or find QuickSwap out and DM us and we'll help you out. Great, Samib. I will leave all those community links uh, for QuickSwap in the description box below. All the best with the continued uh, upgrading and growth of QuickSwap, and let's follow up in the near future. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Esther. It was nice talking to you, and you asked some of the you know uh, very good questions. I would say some you know the questions which like the community has been asking for a long time, 
and we have been trying to answer it but i think through this particular video we'll be able to reach masses and they'll have answer to their questions thank you